It was his first start in 282 days. How did he look? It was a loss, but for some, it felt like a win. And at least there is a bright side or even two bright spots to the Canadians losing 3 nothing to the New York Islanders. We'll discuss it. I'm Marinero, the Sick Podcast, coming up. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast with Tony Maradero. The Sickest Montreal Canadiens Podcast. Now, a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadiens win the Stanley Cup. Sports entertainment like no other. Brought to you by 8.6 Beer. Intense by nature. And Lacage. If the last time you went to Lacage was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you went back to Lacage. The menu will surprise you. Marinero, the sick podcast brought to you by 8.6 Beer. Intense like me by nature. The beer for those who follow their instinct and live their passions in order to make their mark. And brought to you by Lacage. If the last time you went to Lacage was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you go back to Lacage. The menu will surprise you. I was at Lacage La Salle watching the Montreal Canadiens versus the New York Islanders on Friday night. As a matter of fact, I brought my uncles out to supper and we spent a real nice night together. We had a booth right in the middle, pretty much facing the huge screen that was up. And I went with the AAA Angus nine ounce steak. And uh, one of my uncles went with the Blitz burger and my other uncle went with the half rack of ribs. And of course, a couple of uh, pitchers of sangria to wash it all down. What a beautiful night at Lacage. It was a beautiful night for Carey Price. Some would say that it was maybe a little bit incomplete and it could have been more beautiful because Carey Price was playing his first game with the Montreal Canadiens since his last game, which was back on July 7th. 2021, when the Montreal Canadiens lost in Tampa Bay, in Tampa, uh, and were eliminated uh, in the Stanley Cup final, the night that the Tampa Bay Lightning won the Cup. So 282 days, count them, 282 since his last hour. Of course, we all know what happened in the offseason. Carey Price had uh, surgery to his knee in the summer. And uh, then before the season started, he entered the NHL Players Assistance Program, and there's been a lot of ups and downs. And he was asked about it last night at the end of the game, why it took so long to come back from this knee injury. And he said that if he was playing another position, it would have taken less long. But given the nature of his position and some of the movements, which are obviously different movements to those who play either defense or forward, and given his age as well, he'll be 35 in August, the knee would would have all kinds of inflammation and there would be some setbacks. But Carey Price played last night because Carey Price finally was at 100%. And he didn't get tested often. As a matter of fact, he only got tested 20 times or 19 times in the entire hockey game because one of them was a shot in an empty net. But early on in first period, Pelic had a shot that was deflected and Carey Price um, stayed um, held the fort there. And Anders Lee had a shot in the slot. Carey Price made made a blocker save. Uh, It was a game that didn't have too many scoring chances for the Islanders, but the Canadians, they did have their scoring chances for sure. Uh, And there was no goals after two periods of play. The story was Ilya Sorokin, who was in goal for the New York Islanders. He made several big stops, um, notably off of Christian Dvorak in close. Uh, uh, Rem Pitlick had a couple of opportunities. Rem Pitlick also rang one off the crossbar. But he made stop after stop. The Canadians played one of their best games in a long, long time. They outshot their opposition in every single period. They outchanced their opposition in every single period. And yeah, it's four losses in a row for the Canadians. But this was one of their best games in a while. They outshot the Islanders 14 to 8 in period number one, 16 to 4 in period number two. And it was just one of those nights in 14 to 8 in period number three where the puck just was not going to go in for the Montreal Canadiens. Um, earlier uh, that morning, uh, everyone found out about, um, earlier yesterday morning, everyone found out about the death of um, New York Islanders legend and Hockey Hall of Famer Mike Bossy, which I'll talk to you about in just a couple of minutes. Uh, and obviously the New York Islanders wanted to win that one for Mike Bossy. The Canadians wanted to win the game for Carey Price. So you knew that the the teams were not going to give much. And the Canadians, I had a feeling, were going to tighten up and bottle down. 
and play real good defensive hockey in front of Carey Price. And for two and a half periods, they did. Unfortunately for Corey Schooneman, he made a bad mistake. He and Weidman were a defense pairing, and um, he got a pass. And instead of shooting it right away, he tried to handle the puck a little bit, and he mishandled it. And it goes to the New York Islanders the other way for a three on O. And it was uh, Parise to Barzal, who passed back to Parise. Carey Price did not commit, but he tried to get across, but couldn't in time. And the puck was in the net. Nothing he can do on that one. One nothing for the New York Islanders. And later on, there was a puck along the boards, which ended up on Brock Nelson's stick, and he passed it to Noah Dobson. And uh, Romanov was uh, screening Carey Price all but slightly, and uh, a, a great shot by Dobson that he picked the far corner, and there's not much that Carey Price could have done on that one either. And it was 2 nothing for the New York Islanders, and Brock Nelson added an empty net goal, and that's the way it ended. 3 nothing for the Islanders. So on paper, it doesn't look good for Carey Price. The Canadians outshot the Islanders 44-20. to uh, Carey Price was named the second star of the game, and a lot of people... Look, uh, before the game, there were chants of carry, carry, carry. There were signs in the stand. Let's take a look at this sign, as a matter of fact. There's a couple of signs that were up. Look at this. Not all heroes wear capes. Mine wears 31. Bon retour, carry is another. And with his um, wife and two daughters and his baby boy there along the glass, they also had one. Uh, I love 31. And, uh, you know, for those who are going to say, well, hold on a second, Carey Price gave up two goals on 19 shots. You should not have been the star. You're missing the point. Uh, everyone knows that there were players that probably had more of an impact in the game last night than Carey Price and probably offered a little bit of a better performance. Having said that, Price, there's nothing he can do on the two goals. Absolutely nothing. But this one had nothing to do with the performance. This had everything to do with coming back uh, he's had several injuries over the course of his career. He's had several surgeries. He's had several setbacks. Um, he entered the player's assistance program um, because his health was getting out of hand and he wanted to get back on track for him, his family, um, his teammates, and he was able to do that. Now think about this for a second. It's a lost season for the Canadians. Going into last night's game, there were eight games left in their regular season. They're second last in the league. He didn't have to come back. He didn't have to. He could have not played if he wanted to say, oh, you know what, my knee's not, my, not 100%. I don't want to play. He played for several reasons. He played so that all the hard work that he's done was rewarded by being back on the ice. He played because he missed the game. He played because he missed his teammates. He played because he wanted to give something back to the fans who supported him. He played because he wanted to prove something to himself and prove something to people in the National Hockey League. He played because for the first time, his little boy was going to watch his father play. And so... Carey Price was named the second star of the game after Ilya Sorokin, who was first and the best player of the game because of everything he's been through and because of the adversity and because of the determination and because he deserved last night more than ever to get a great round of applause from the fans. That's why he was the second star of the game. The Canadians host the Washington Capitals on Saturday night. Carey Price said he felt good. And Marty St. Louis says it's going to be up to Carey Price if he feels good when he's going to get back in there again. And I would hope that Carey Price gets a couple of more starts in the final seven games of the season. And I hope that Carey Price wins at least one of them. But I wouldn't mind if the Canadians lose all the rest because I want them to finish last overall because it's going to be all right. In ending, um, I want to talk about Mike Bossy. It was on um, late Thursday night that Mike Bossy passed away. Um, 
And yesterday, on Friday morning, Friday afternoon, and Friday night, everyone talked about Mike Bossy and the unbelievable career that he had. The NHL's all-time leading goal scorer is Wayne Gretzky with 894 goals. Alexander Ovechkin, Gordy Howe is second. Alexander Ovechkin is third. Everyone talks about how great those guys were scoring goals. For players who have scored a, a minimum of 200 goals in the regular season in their career, Wayne Gretzky scored 0.6 goals per game. Alexander Ovechkin has scored 0.61 goals per game. Mario Lemieux, the great Mario Lemieux, scored 0.75 goals per game. That's second best all time to Mike Bossy, who scored 0.76 goals per game. Mike Bossy was the purest goal scorer of them all. 15th overall in the NHL draft. The Canadians had a chance to draft him at 10th overall. They chose Mark Napier instead. Bossy was in their own backyard playing with the Laval Nationals. The Canadians scouts said of Bossy that his defensive game was deficient, that he was frail, and that his skating wasn't very good. Boy, were they wrong. Mike Bossy went on to score 50-plus goals in his first nine seasons in the National Hockey League. And a bad back forced him to retire after his 10th season in the National Hockey League. Nine straight seasons, 50-plus goals. The purest goal scorer of his time. And probably an even better person. I want to tell you about one or two experiences I had with Mike Bossy. When I started off in the biz close to 20 years ago, uh, I reached out to Mike Bossy uh, because I, you know, wanted to pick his brain. And uh, at the time, he was working for Humpty Dumpty. And uh, they weren't too far from my house. Um, it was in Lachine, and I live in LaSalle. And uh, he said, sure, Tony, uh, come meet me at Humpty Dumpty, and was always very generous with his time. And we'd have conversations, and he talked to me about the art of scoring goals. And a lot of people say, you can't teach someone to score goals. Mike Bossy always told me, Tony, you can teach someone to score goals. And he had offered his services to the Canadians uh, to work with some of their forwards, to teach them where to position themselves and to teach them how to shoot the puck and different methods of shooting the puck and where to shoot from and how to score goals and all that stuff. And unfortunately, he was never hired. He insisted you can teach players how to score goals. He and I, he taught me so much, um, little tips, um, talk to me about power plays, different power play schemes. Talk to me about the art of scoring goals. And once again, was very generous with his time. And at one point, I had the privilege of uh, emceeing an event for Chevrolet Safe and Fun Hockey. And um, Bobby Orr was there and Mike Bossy was there. And I was in a locker room with both of them. And they were just talking uh, and um, made me part of the conversation, which was a real honor. Uh, but for the most part, I did more listening on that day than I did talking for a change. And I just took in so much information listening to those two uh, legends speak. And one of those legends, Mike Bossy, is no longer with us. It's a shame. Uh, lung cancer um, took his life at only 65 years of age. Mike Bossy was a legend hockey player. He was even more of a legendary person. I'll never forget the talks I had with him. He was a real gentleman. On behalf of myself and everyone here at the Sick Podcast, our thoughts and prayers go out to the Bossy family. We love you, Mike. You can um, probably still pick up a New York Islanders jersey at sportbuffshop.com for all of your officially licensed sports apparel and our Sick merchandise. Use code SICK15 for 15% off on all of their items. And if you do, buy a New York Islander jersey and put 22 in the back of the jersey and put bossy a shout out to matrix home fitness.ca bring it home discover club quality workout in the comfort of your own home visit matrix home fitness.ca i saw a picture yesterday of mike bossy and gila fleur and by the way um why not one more quick bossy story here you go back in 1984 the canadians played the new york islanders in the playoffs in the semis and um, the Canadians had a goalie who got hot. His name was Steve Penny. 
And I went to watch game two at the forum. The Canadians had won game one. Steve Penny was hot. In game two, there was a couple of fights. Richard Sevigny fought Billy Smith. And uh, I believe Tonelli fought as well in, in that game. Uh, but anyway, the Canadians won game two by a score of four to two. And I was convinced the Canadians were going to win that series. I was probably, what was I, uh, 11 and a half. I went with my dad's friend to the game. My dad couldn't make it that night. And um, I was convinced the Canadians were going to go to the Stanley Cup final that year because they had a really hot goaltender in Steve Penny. In game three in New York, um, Bossy scored a goal in a 5-3 win, I believe. In game four, Bossy scored in a 3-1 win. I think he scored the second goal. It was the eventual game winner. In game five, he picked up an assist, and the Islanders won that one too. And in game six, in New York, with the Islanders having a 3-2 series lead after trailing 2 nothing, Mike Bossy scored two goals in a 4-1 win. Mike Bossy was unbelievable. I was a Canadiens fan growing up, but so much respect for Mike Bossy, the player. It was absolutely fantastic. And in ending, um, I saw a picture yesterday on social media of Mike Bossy and Guy Lafleur. And Guy Lafleur, too, is going through lung cancer and he's in the battle of his life. Guy, we're pulling for you. I love you. Uh, I'll end with one more great Mike Bossy story. Canada Cup, uh, semifinal, Canada versus USSR. Uh, Paul Coffey breaks up a two-on-one on a great defensive play. The puck goes the other way. Mike Bossy goes to the front of the net. Paul Coffey takes a great wrist shot, deflected by Mike Bossy, game winner, Canada wins. Mike Bossy, what a goal. Mike Bossy, what a career. Mike Bossy, what a gentleman. Tell your friends about the podcast, the sick podcast. You can take a look at it on all social media platforms, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at the sick podcast, and subscribe to our YouTube page at the sick podcast. It's absolutely free. Thoughts and prayers to the uh, Bossy family. Carrie Price, good for you. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by 8.6, Intense by Nature, and Lakage. If the last time you went to Lakage was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you went back to Lakage. The menu will surprise you.